Hmm, almost pie season. You know, there's a big difference between the ways we want to describe what we drive and how we should be doing it. Fast, fun, and filled with features, yeah, that all sounds great to me. But what about sensible, predictable, and dependable? Well, they don't exactly add up to something sexy, but they probably mean that what's parked in your driveway can handle all kinds of jobs without much hassle. See where I'm going with this yet? Yes, you guessed it. They're all great ways to describe the Honda CRV, a crossover that's starting to show its age a bit, but it manages to keep up with the competition in ways that matter most. Come on. Woo. Car reviews, don't forget to share our channel and subscribe so you can catch some of this and maybe even a little of that. Five years can feel like an awfully long time in this industry, especially in a fast moving segment like this one. And that really is the CRV's biggest problem because in the five years since this version came out, almost its entire competitive set has been overhauled. That does put it at a bit of a disadvantage. And no, frills have never really been the CRV's thing, but it's a clear step behind the competition. Just take a look at entries like the Toyota RAV4, the Nissan Rogue, or even the Ford Escape, and that's just to name a few. You can definitely see where this comes up short. For example, take a look at that RAV4. You can get heated and ventilated front seats, but these ones, they're only heated even in a fully loaded trim like the one I'm driving. Now, in fairness to the CRV, these rear seats are heated, and that's the case in the top three trims, and that's something you only get in the top trim of the RAV4, and you can't get heated rear seats at all in the Escape. But again, something else you have to consider is that if you look at that Escape or the Nissan Rogue, you can get a head-up display, and that is not something that's offered here. You can't even get a surround view monitor system, and that's something you can get with all three of those competitors. And then even more, basically, there are no USB-C ports in here, and the one on the right down here, yeah, it's a one amp USB-A port, which means it's gonna take an awful long time to charge a cell phone. Now, I know some of you might say I'm nitpicking, but none of that is too much to ask for, and I call it staying competitive. So here's a way the CRV isn't just competitive, but it's at the top of the class. Just look at all the room in here. Ignore front seat headroom, though. That's never been one of the CRV's calling cards. As you can see, I'm pretty wedged up against this headliner with this sunroof. But again, it's not too bad, and it shouldn't be a problem for you if you are closer to average height. But everything else is fantastic, including the cargo room. And I mean, just take a look back there. I have my 29er standing upright because this cabin is so tall. There's more than enough room for that massive tire. All I had to do was pop the front wheel off. It's really impressive, and I could easily fit another one back here as well. I love that. And it's not just the outright space, but it's how usable it is. I mean, the lift over height is incredibly low, and that makes loading the back of this thing so incredibly easy. That's one of those things that you can't really put a value on, but it's going to come in handy over and over again. And the same goes for the quick release handles in the back. Totally underutilized feature, and I love that they're in there because that means if you're carrying some big bulky item, you don't have to put it down so you can walk around to either door and fold the seats down. The handles are right there, just give them a pull and both sides of that 60-40 back bench fold so you open up over 2,100 liters of space. It is absolutely massive in here. This one goes out to my guy, Oscar, who mentioned in the comments on my Sorento review that it would have been cool to give you guys a little tour of the interior so you can see how it all comes together. And I think that's an excellent idea. So here we are in the CRV, and this has to be the reigning champ as far as user friendliness goes. Just take a look in here. Everything falls readily to hand. I do have some complaints though, and not just those frills you are giving up that I mentioned earlier. Just take this seven inch touchscreen. It is a little on the small side, but worse than that, 
the refresh rate. It is very slow to skip from one feature to the next. You can really see it with certain stuff like the navigation. Anyways, I also don't like these touch sensors for the shortcuts instead of physical controls. And I don't like that you don't get a physical tuner to skip songs or radio stations. And then the climate control, well, it does have physical controls and you can see the temperature up in the top corner. But if you want a full view of what's happening, you have to pull it up on the screen. But back to what I do like, take a look at the steering wheel. All the controls make a lot of sense, except for this button here marked main. That's how you turn on the standard adaptive cruise control. That doesn't make much sense to me, but once you figure it out, it is very straightforward. The other stuff that's standard here too, lane keep assist and forward collision warning with auto braking, and you can turn those on or off very easily with these buttons by your left knee. Again, this is just about as simple as it gets. Now, only the top touring trim and this black edition that's based on it get sensor-based blind spot monitoring. The EXL and Sport trims, well, they get Honda's camera-based system that gives you a live look at the passenger side. It's not ideal, but it still comes in handy, especially around town. It's a great way to keep an eye out for cyclists when you go to make a right-hand turn. It automatically comes on as soon as you engage your signal, or you can just hit a button on the end of the signal stock and it'll come up on this display. I know Honda's moving away from it, but as far as safety goes, I do think it has its merits. And that's the case with just about everything that Honda offers. It all works really well, though I will say the forward collision warning system that Honda has is very sensitive. And that means it's gonna beep and flash at you in normal city traffic. It's not like you're tailgating people. It is gonna give you that warning here in the gauge cluster and be beeping quite a bit. And of course, the same goes with the adaptive cruise control. It keeps a pretty wide gap from the vehicle ahead and that gives other drivers a chance to cut in front of you, which means it's gonna slow you down and it's gonna cause that chain reaction of slowing everyone else down. But I do have to say, all of that stuff does make the CRV easier to live with and I'm happy it's here. Just generally speaking, all that advanced safety stuff and everything else about the CRV is built to make the drive experience about as painless as possible. That really is its MO here and it's nailed the basics. And it's also very simple. You don't have to worry about a bunch of different packages that change up the drivetrain and the powertrain. There aren't a bunch of engines to pick from. So every trim but the base one does come with all wheel drive and you can add it to the base trim for about 2,500 bucks. And it's a fully automatic system. So there are no settings to learn or different things to worry about, just let it do its thing. And the same goes with the engine. We don't get the hybrid in Canada that other markets have. So all you get is a one and a half liter turbocharged four cylinder and it's enough of what you need and nothing you don't. It's not especially powerful and it is mated to a continuously variable transmission that does get pretty buzzy when you get on the gas. It's not exactly enjoyable to listen to, just check it out. I mean, this thing is quick enough, but it definitely puts up a fight when you bury your foot into it. But I do have to say, even with all-wheel drive along for the ride, it is pretty efficient. Now, again, this all-wheel drive system, fully automatic, and it splits torque only when it needs it. So when you accelerate, it's gonna send a little bit more to the rear wheels. And the same thing goes if you start to lose traction up front, but otherwise it just does its own thing and it prefers to power the front wheels, but that cuts down on fuel consumption quite a bit. It's rated for around 8.1 liters per 100 kilometers combined, which is very impressive, but even more impressive is just how easy it is to match those numbers. Last time I drove a CRV, it was winter time, so it had winter tires and it was pretty cold, but I think I averaged right around 8.3 liters per 100 kilometers. This week, I'm in the high sevens because it's spring, it's beautiful, and I've been doing what I normally do. I went on my 200 kilometer drive loop earlier this week and it was amazing. It was down to about 7.4 liters per 100 without even trying. I'm very impressed. The only way you're gonna do better than this in a crossover this size is to go with one of the few hybrids we do have on the market. And that makes this its second biggest calling card next to all the space in here. No, it's not exciting to drive the way the turbocharged Mazda CX-5 is when you get on the gas. But again, I think there's more than enough and this is gonna do the job for most people. And even the way it drives is just pretty okay. You're gonna notice some body roll if you take an on-ramp a little too quick, but the steering feel, not all that bad and neither is the brake feel. 
puts you in a nice sense of control. No, you don't feel like you're in a sporty crossover, but again, that's not what this is about. But you do know exactly what's happening at all times and you feel like you are the driver. I think that is very important. Even if you're not interested in driving, you should know what's happening at all times and the CRV delivers. Now consider that you get all of that for a crossover that starts at right around 32 grand before tax. Again, you do have to add that 2,500 bucks if you want all wheel drive in the base trim, but that still means you're under $35,000. Now, if you do want to step up to the sport trim, I still think that's the best value in the lineup, but the price jumped quite a bit from the 2020 that I drove last year, and it's 39,000 bucks before tax. No small chunk of change, but again, there is good value there. It's only when you look at the EXL or the touring trims that they crest that $40,000 mark. And that's where you're gonna notice this thing starting to lag the competition in terms of amenities, especially more modern ones out there because you're getting a lot more stuff for similar money or even less. And that's especially true of this black edition I'm driving. So here's the thing with this black edition, it is $46 thousand dollars before tax that is a lot of money for a small crossover like this let alone one that feels like it's missing a few features and that's really where the crv starts to lose me because there is some good stuff in here but not enough to justify that price tag so let me talk about some of the good and i will start with this interior i really like the fact that you get these black door handles and this blacked out fake wood trim Subtle, but I do dig it a lot. And this leather is very nice too, but I do have to say a lot of the plastics in here, pretty scratch prone, especially the stuff around these cup holders. This thing barely has 2000 kilometers on the odometer and you can already see that it's pretty scuffed up. I can't imagine what this is gonna look like after a few years of ownership. On the outside, I do have to say, I like the look of this a lot. And here's something I wanna point out. My video producer, Will, well, he noticed right away this thing looked different. He thought this CRV was updated from the one that we reviewed last year. And all it took was a coat of white paint and some black accents. It really plays up that Stormtrooper vibe. I dig it a lot. But again, would I be willing to spend more than 50 grand with tax on this thing? That is a very tough question. To recap, I like how easy the CRV is to live with, how spacious it is inside, and how efficient it is. I don't like that it's starting to feel outdated in terms of features and technology, how buzzy the powertrain is, or how expensive it is at the top of the lineup. The Honda CRV is about as hassle free as they come, which might not stir much emotion, but I'm telling you right now, there is nothing wrong with keeping it this simple. And I really do think that's what this thing does best. Whether you're talking about all of the space inside, the way everything works, or how efficient it is, it nails the essentials and nothing more.